Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Kryptonite, the uh, crypto investor channel. I'm Boris, so let's dive in. I'm with Colton today. Hello, Colton. Hey, Boris. I hope we're doing well. Welcome back to the Kryptonite channel, everyone. All right, let's talk VeChain today. Yeah, my first question for you today, Boris, is, you know, can you dive into VeChain and, you know, what is VeChain and what is the project? VeChain is basically, um, it's the Internet of Things. And that blockchain really was created so that you can have traceability on all your uh, all your goods. Uh, it's sitting on the top of Ethereum, so it's an ERC20 token. And uh, it's basically, it's a blockchain and it sits on the top of Ethereum, so it could be considered a layer two. Uh, and really, uh, they are helping big companies this is really meant for big businesses uh to trace all their goods so they have big partnerships with walmart bmw even the chinese government uh louis vuitton uh winemakers coffee makers i mean any product that has to be shipped worldwide and <clears throat> people need to deal with some supply chain issues as well as, as well as traceability, making sure a product is the genuine product. It's not a fake or a knockoff. So uh, that's really what they were invented for. They have smart contracts, uh, which is very important for the uh, supply chain side. They also employ a proof of authority consensus protocol. So they are neither a proof of work nor a proof of stake or even a proof of history like some others. Uh, really, the authority is meant to be done by the masternodes. So they have a limited number of masternodes. They currently have 101 validators. And contrary to a proof of stake where you just stake your coin and the validator is actually uh, decided by the number of, of coins he has staked, here, it is actually VeChain who says, you know, we are giving you authority to become a validator. So they pick and choose their validators and they have to go through a very extensive KYC process. And for those who don't know what KYC is, it's know your customer. It's basically checking out the identity of the person, but, you know, making sure where do they reside, uh, where, you know, maybe their income, you know, different things to really know who they are and not give to a bunch of unknown people uh, the ability to become validators. So the good thing about uh, proof of authority it is it uses very low energy because of obviously there are just a limited number of validators. And also it improves, you know, the speed of uh, block validations. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, what the, uh, the thing is. And they have, they have two tokens. They have the VET, V-E-T, which is really the token for the uh, ecosystem. And they have the V-Chain Thor, which is the, uh, uh, the token for the blockchain infrastructure. Okay, yes, sir. So that's pretty much who who they are in a nutshell. Awesome. You know, my next question for you, Boris, is can you kind of dive into the history and performance of the coin? Sure. So the history of the coin is uh, they were created in 2015 by two people from China, Jay Zhang and Sunny Lu. And one of them was working for Louis Vuitton. So obviously, that's probably how they got their partnership. And also probably some of the ideas came from that because there are lots of supply chain issues whenever you manufacture as many products as Louis Vuitton does. And then you also have the uh, traceability. You want to make sure that if you buy a Louis Vuitton purse, that it's a real one and not a fake. So that's when they created the uh the project in 2015 in 2016 they came out with the smart contracts so that that's uh very important to be able to do transactions on the uh, on the blockchain by 2017 they started integrating with automotives uh agricultural and then auditing companies you know such as pwc 
uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Uh, in 2018, they launched the VeChain Tor, you know, that uh, other coin I was talking about, you know, and uh, they created over a hundred billion, you know, uh, then, which is that uh, uh, that coin, you know, for for VeChain. So. In 2019, they had a partnership with Walmart and they grew into more and more uh, companies. And uh, 2021, they came up with the proof of authority 2.0 consensus. So they came up with uh, uh, more, you know, more things and upgraded their uh, proof of authority. Uh, they are also now incorporated in San Marino. San Marino is basically uh, a very tiny country uh, next uh, to Italy. Uh, it's a little bit like Monaco with France and uh, they have tax advantages there and stuff like that. But they're also very strict on some of their regulations. So. The reason they moved to Europe is they figured out that there could be probably more uh, clients, you know, if they were based in Europe. And also it would remove some of the fear that people had at first when people knew they were a Chinese company based in China. So now they're they're more like a, a European company. On their market cap, they're sitting currently at 1.7 billion. So it's already a pretty good one. They're ranked uh, 37. Uh, and uh, they have a circulation of uh, 72 billion uh, tokens. The max supply is 85 billion and uh, or 86 billion, and the total supply is 86 billion, so pretty much the same thing. So they have released most, I mean, already most of their tokens are already kind of in circulation. Uh, their whole time high was around 27, 28 cents. It was back in uh, in uh, April 2021. So they've been they're down 91 percent from their whole time high because they're currently sitting around two cents. Uh, and if we look at their graph, this is basically you know starting in uh, January 2021, they were at like 2.7 cents. They ran all the way up to about 28 cents by April, which was basically a 10x in, in a matter of just a, a, a very few months. And then they've been going up and down with the market. Uh, in November, when the market kind of topped up, they went back to 17 cents. And ever since, you know, they've been falling with the, the rest of the market but they are still developing very aggressively their uh their partnerships with uh big companies so uh imp interesting to note that their ico took place in 2017 and at the time the price of the coin was actually eight cents so it's it's really uh you know four times less today than it was at the ICO time. And then they have a good distribution between private investors. They represent about 9%. Uh, enterprise investors represent about 23%. And then the VeChain Foundation has about 13%. And uh, the team members of uh, that are representing uh, 5%. And uh, Basically, that that's that's what it did in a in a nutshell, you know, on the distribution of all those uh, those tokens. So, it's it's not a bad distribution. It's not like you have some entity that owns more than half the tokens or something like that. There's a good distribution between investors, the foundation, the team members, all that kind of stuff. So that's something usually you wanna you you wanna look for. Yes, sir. My next question for you today, Boris, is, is can you kind of dive into their latest news and what's down their roadmap for us? Yeah, so we're going to go we're going to try to go fast because there is like so much news around that. I mean, it's it's not even funny. Uh, <clears throat> so they have uh, a new great partnership, which is the UFC. So for those that li like mar mixed martial arts stuff, you know, UFC is, uh, is is huge, and they have a, a, a huge deal with them for a hundred million dollars over the next five years. So they're going to be, of course, they're gonna, you're going to see some V chain advertising on the UFC side. You're going to see them, uh, you know, advertise in all their events. Uh, they also 
because UFC sells a lot of products so and services, so they're going to be um, uh, also taking care of, of that side of things. Uh, important to note that in Europe, they have opened a, uh, a technology center in Ireland and they've hired more than 100 developers. So we're really talking really about a big project because 100 developers, that's a lot of that's a lot of people that makes, you know, that's a pretty big payroll. Um, so they came up with the 2.0 uh, recently in October, the 2.0 2 uh, upgrade uh, to their proof of authority. Uh, and really, it's to offer more speed and more reliability uh, to everybody. So, and also <clears throat> because they consume so much less energy with that new uh, version, uh, the carbon footprint is is very very low, which is very appealing for all those big supply chain companies because that is usually one of their big problem when you have big supply chain uh, companies. They they have big problem with their carbon footprint so that's going to help them reduce that which in that note amazon just announced that they're doing a partnership with vchain because of that because of uh, vchain being able to help them with the carbon footprint so uh big news also right there another big name you know joining the uh the vchain uh, ecosystem they have also announced that they're working with the ATP tour, which is tennis. So they are uh, doing all all kinds of stuff with uh, with the ATP, a little bit like they're doing with the uh, with the UFC. Then we have Yongpu, which is a coffee brand, but a huge one because uh, they are currently worth 100 billion yuan which is the Chinese money. Now, if I translate that into, let's say, US dollars, current value is. So that's the equivalent of $13 billion. So it's a $13 billion company, not a small player, that is now also working with VeChain. And uh, they're gonna be improving once again the downstream of the supply chain and the uh, you know management of the online and offline uh, sales channels. So uh, th that shows you you know most of the that's what I like about VeChain is most of the projects they're working on they're very big project. It's with very big companies. And there is a real utility to what they do. You know, a lot of other projects, they are either say, oh, yeah, stake with us and you'll make some money or, you know, our stuff is about DeFi. This is great, but you also need some real world applications that will really bring something to the table that actual big companies can use. And VeChain is really one of the best projects out there to uh, to do that. Um, they have, uh, you know, they have a few, uh, a, a few more things going on with, uh, other companies, uh, uh, wine is one of them in Italy. They're doing the traceability of wine because like any product, you know, there are people making fake wine, pretending that it's, uh, you know, uh, an expensive brand when it's really a knockoff. So the traceability being so important, especially for luxury goods, uh, they are doing more and more stuff. BMW that I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, it's to do tracing, it's to help them with supply chain and as well traceability of parts, making sure they are genuine BMW parts, that what you buy is not, you know, something that has been made uh you know in uh in 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 a country where you, they, they make knockoffs yes sir so lots of news recently lots of partnerships that they're building which is going to help them with their revenue stream and they're doing something very smart hiring a lot of developers especially in the bear market is always very important that means that not only they have the phones to keep on going but second of all, they are preparing themselves to have a really good day whenever the bull market returns a few years from now. So I would suggest if you're interested in VeChain to follow them on Twitter. They 
are publishing a lot of news all the time on their Twitter account. And uh, it's, it's very amazing uh, some of the big partnerships that they are forming. Yes, sir. I appreciate all that information, Boris. Can you now kind of dive into staking and, you know, where's the best place to stake? Sure. Now, on the staking, you're not going to make uh, necessarily a ton of money. Uh, there are two ways really to stake with VeChain. Either you can become a masternode, but that's very complicated or it is a little complicated, you know, but it's not impossible. But the problem is you need to stake minimum 1 million VET, you know, and then you have a few different levels. They have strength, thunder, and then, uh, you know, a few, a few other levels. But basically, if you want to be an authority node, you need 25 million VET. So that obviously is not available to everyone. You know, even though it's at two cents, that's still, you know, a lot of money. So... Uh, that's the first way to stake. And with that, they will reward you with about 10%, you know, a year, which is, which is good, but it requires a very large investment. The other way you can do it is by staking it either on an exchange or in private wallet. Now, one of them that does it, for instance, is Atomic Wallet. They uh, offer 1.63%. And you stake VET, but they pay you in VTOR, you know, that that second token we were talking about. So they don't reward you in in uh, in VET. But it's only 1.63%. Now, if you want slightly better, you can go to Binance, even though it is never recommended to stake your coins on the exchange, but maybe some people could consider that Binance is so strong, so solid and so big that, you know, they're still fairly safe for an exchange. And on that, they will offer you 2.47% to stake. However, late as of late, um, I did stake a few VET on, on Binance and you can only stake them for 15 days. You cannot stake them for any longer than that. So that means that every 15 days you have to go back and restake your, your coins. But uh, so those are the, the few options. And there are a few others out there, a few other uh, wallets that do uh, pay for VeChain. Uh, and, and it's going to be along the same line. It's going to be between one and a half to two and a half percent uh, staking on those uh, on, on those wallets. Awesome. That is great information, Boris. My last question for you today is, can you dive into um, the price prediction for this coin? Yeah, so as usual, the the, 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 the price prediction is, is always difficult because uh, the project has been around for a while. And if we go back to the price, uh, we were looking at, you know, from 2020 to today, and it's pretty much back to its price uh, as it was as of late 20, early, very early 2021. But if we look at the um, at the max, it was introduced around eight cents, you know, and then it dropped, and then basically it it, it was sitting around two, three, four cents for a very long time, you know, for pretty much over two years it was not really moving because obviously they needed to sign more partnerships. You know, they needed to show traction to everybody, but then they started showing more and more traction. So people got excited. And so the price went way up. Now it's back down to, you know, originally what it was, but with all the partnerships they have, I mean, I, I feel very strongly about V chain. I own V chain. I think they're going to do really, really well, especially having that uh, strong uh, partnerships with all those big brands. So in a near future, let's say over, let's say by next year, we could see the price being around five cents, which would double. It would be a two X by sometime, <clears throat> sometimes next year. By 2025, we might be along the lines of more around seven cents you know six seven cents you know a little progression really when the bull market returns is really when we're going to see some better prices because then we're going to reach you know 
the whole time high again and possibly even pass it. So we could be anywhere between 28 to 50 cents by 2027, which, you know, already as a minimum is kind of a 10x from here. So that's that's I think a good uh, a good possibility that they reach that price. After that, 2030, they're doing so much partnership, they're doing so many work. It's hard to know how much money they're really going to make. So the problem is predictions are a little bit all over the place. There are some that are predicting, you know, V chain at like uh, almost five dollars. There is even one that's completely crazy that's saying, you know, 50, 60, up to a hundred dollars by 2050. So they are really putting a super high price on this. I think it's maybe a little too much. Realistically, you know, given everything, I think around a dollar would be a pretty good, uh, a pretty good target by 2030 which is roughly 50, 50 X from here. So that's, that's definitely a, 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 a great, uh, a great return, especially for a coin that's already ranked number 37. So it's already kind of high in the ranking of all the cryptos. Uh, finding 50 X coins is not easy in, uh, in the top 100 coins or in the top 50 coins. So basically that's it, you know, doubling by next year, potentially depends on some factors of course by 2027 returning to all-time high and then eventually even passing it and then by 2030 around a dollar uh and that would be 50 50x from here awesome from my side boris that's all i have for today i appreciate the information but if you have anything else please feel free to add it yeah i mean uh chain is definitely uh, a, a good one that has great utility and for me i think i'm gonna buy a little more you know uh we'll, we'll see how the market goes over the next few months especially if there is a dip and they dip a little lower they might go slightly under two cents definitely under two cents me personally it's not financial advice of course but i will i will buy some more Awesome, Boris. From my side, that's like it said. for today. Thank you, Colton. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to see you on the next Crypto Night video. I hope this video helps. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like the video at the end, click on the thumbs up.